My BFI player choice this week is a 19th century questing tale from Icelandic writer-director Hlinor Palmason, which, like his previous film A White White Day, was his country's official submission for the Academy Awards Godland. Elliot Crossett Hover plays ambitious and zealous young Lutheran priest Lucas, a photography enthusiast who is tasked by his superiors with travelling from Denmark to the remote wilds of colonised Iceland to set up a church. His destination may be under Danish rule, but the two territories are worlds apart in every sense. As Lucas is told, his journey will bring him face to face with a world that is very different from the one he knows, whether it's the people, the weather, or a volcano that smells like the earth has shat its pants. Crucially, Lucas must learn to adapt rather than lose his mind, something that proves harder than expected for this stern-faced soul whose faith starts to crack when confronted with the harsh majesty of God's creation. No wonder the film's original title, inspired by a poem by Matthias Jochumsen, significantly presented on screen in both Danish and Icelandic, translates more accurately as Wretched Land. From sodden mud to jarring rocks and swollen rivers, Lucas's quest is fraught with peril and the constant threat of failure, if not death. Yet, as Lucas declares, so much of the divine piles up in me that I cannot die. Instead, he soldiers on, led by taciturn guide Ragnar, played with dismissive stoicism by Ingvar Egart Sigurdsson. While Lucas's head may be in the clouds, Ragnar is made of earthier stuff and harbours little affection for his clerical companion. It's clear from the outset that they will come to blows, both mental and physical. Songs are sung to the weather and to waterfalls, with accordion-led dances and plaintive murder ballads providing sardonic commentary on the action. Meanwhile, musician Alex Zhang Hungtai offers sparse but striking ambient accompaniment, his improvised wind instrument riffs blending seamlessly with the endless sounds of gusty rain, for which Icelandic, as Lucas discovers, has many words. There's a strong element of myth and magic at work here too, most notably in the recitation of an eerie dream about mating eels and mass infidelity, and in the sight of the body of a horse rotting over a period of years and returning to the earth. It all adds to the film's haunting appeal, leaving the viewer with a sense of being engulfed by a landscape in which cultures collide, the incarnate and the infinite forever butting heads, neither willing to concede hard-won ground.